Sometimes, the most popular category for a speed game isn't the most interesting. It can be accessible, fun, even downright easy. But sometimes, these runs don't have any meat to them. Sometimes, the people want to bite into something with substance. For Hollow Knight, an indie Metroidvania, what better category than a Dark Souls level boss rush that runs for over an hour? Today, we're looking into the true ending speedrun for one of the best indie games released in the last 10 years. A run that brings even the best runners this community has to offer to their knees. A run where routing meets rivalry, where honor is on the line. We're doing a desolate dive into the abyss of Hollow Nest. Try to keep up. Welcome to Speed Dogs. Before we talk about Hollow Knight, let's explain what a Metroidvania is. The term is a portmanteau of the game series Metroid and Castlevania. These games feature a large, interconnected world map the player can explore, although access to most places is initially blocked off. Through exploration, the player can acquire new items and abilities used to progress further through the game and interact in new ways within the game's environment. The more moves and items you have, the easier the game becomes. Now, on to Hollow Knight. In Hollow Knight, the player controls the knight as they arrive in Hollow Nest. A bug called the Radiance has taken over the minds of the denizens of this kingdom. Fearing its controlling power, the king of Hollow Nest sealed away the Radiance inside a living vessel called the Hollow Knight. Now, unable to contain the Radiance anymore, the player must defeat boss after boss to get to the Hollow Knight's chamber to defeat the Radiance once and for all. Which brings us to how the game can end. In Hollow Knight, there are multiple endings. For the sake of this video, we will not be talking about the endings added in the DLC, like Embrace the Void, nor will we refer to the Absolute Radiance boss. In order to gain access to the final area of the game, the Black Egg Temple, the player must destroy the three seals on the door. Each seal corresponds to a Dreamer, which is a glowing piñata the player must defeat. After defeating the three Dreamers, Lurian, Monomon, and Hera, respectively, the player can enter the Black Egg Temple. However, entering this area without doing a few things first will unlock the bad ending. In order to unlock true ending, the player must collect both halves of the King Soul Charm, and then turn the King Soul Charm into the Void Heart. To get Void Heart, the player must enter the Abyss, which involves defeating Hornet a second time to get an item called King's Brand. On top of all this, the player needs to collect the Dream Nail, an upgraded weapon that allows the knight to enter the Dream Realm and collect Essence. Each boss grants a specific amount of Essence when defeated, and the player must collect 1800 Essence to complete the King's Soul Charm. After equipping the King's Soul Charm and taking it into the Abyss, an area called the Birthplace will open up. Dream Nailing a big arcane egg will prompt a cutscene, which unlocks Voidheart. Now you can enter the Black Egg Temple and fight the Hollow Knight but instead of killing him, you dream nail him, putting you inside his dreams where you fight the true final boss of the game, the Radiance. That's the super condensed version of what needs to happen in order to achieve the true ending. There are areas within areas that need to be unlocked, there are boss fights galore, and lots of items and abilities learned in between. The route to get there differs, but in order to achieve true ending, that's what needs to happen. Now, on to the story. Hollow Knight was released on February 24th, 2017, by the indie developer Team Cherry. 
a crowdfunded effort on Kickstarter, the game had a sizable fan base on release, and soon became a bit of a cult classic. The game features solid mechanics and game feel, while also sporting a beautiful orchestral soundtrack and distinct visual style. And hey, there are even speedrun achievements. In the first few months after its release, the game had a small speedrunning community. Because the game was young and new, the vast majority of the 20-ish person community focused on any percent speedruns. After all, it would be foolish to try to optimize the longer categories before players even had a solid grasp on the game. Just the size of the community, like, um, if, if you can only really um, congeal around one thing, then it's going to be the kind of whatever the default category for that game is, yeah. You need like a certain size before you can really kind of expand to other things and, you know, stre stretch your limbs a bit, I guess. Finally, in April, Mossy Rain ventures into the true ending category to explore the uncharted waters. Without an established route to go on, Mossy Rain had to plot one of their own. Their first completed time, a 2.43.18 on April 7, 2017. Mossy starts their run by going to upgrade the Nail, the basic attack of the game, to nearly double its damage output. From there, they go to collect Desolate Dive and Descending Dark. Desolate Dive is the Ground Slam spell, and Descending Dark is the upgraded version of that spell. Shortly after that, Mossy Rain gets the Monarch Wings, the game's double jump ability. After fighting Hornet the second time, they can now unlock the Abyss with the King's Brand. They next grab Shade Cloak, which gives some invincibility frames to the Knight's Dash, and is required to collect half of the King's Soul Charm. From here, they get another Nail upgrade, unlock Howling Wraiths, the Upward Special Attack, and then it's off to the bosses. Fighting Soul Tyrant, Umu, and Failed Champion, they head off to White Palace to complete the King's Soul Charm. The White Palace is Hollow Knight's ultimate platforming challenge. There aren't even enemies to avoid. The game instead throws giant saw blades, spikes, thorny walls, and tiny platforms at the player, requiring expert level skill to navigate. Okay, White Palace is definitely the hardest platforming section in the run. Um, like, Hollow Knight is a platformer, but you won't see as much platforming challenges as like Celeste and other games like that. Um, um, but White Palace is kind of an exception to that. It's the hardest platforming section. They kind of made it for that purpose. And uh, yeah, it's it's cool in the speedrun because there's a lot of skips that like casual players don't know about. And when you actually see the whole thing in the true ending run, like the whole White Palace route, I think it flows really well and it just looks really impressive. Mossy does a few shortcuts, but opts out of the harder ones. While their White Palace was deathless, they still lost a lot of health to failing sections over and over. All in all, their 243.18 was a decent first attempt. A few days later, Mossy Rain would lower their time to a 232.44. By getting Monarch Wings earlier, they're able to immediately go to Monomon, followed by Howling Wraiths. Mossy gets King's Brand to go down to get Abyss Shriek, the upgraded version of Howling Wraiths, much earlier than their previous run. At the very end, Mossy dies to the Radiance which loses about 8 minutes. Fortunately, they were ahead by 18 minutes, so they had time to spare. Later that same day, Devil Tifa uploads his own time of 2.14.50. This speedrun follows the route of the 2.43.18, not the 2.32.44. Moving with intent, Devil Tifa lost around 3 minutes after soft locking on the Zero Fight, but rattled off a few gold splits to keep the run going. After not dying to the Radiance, Devil Tifa closed out a run 18 minutes faster than Mossy Rain's newest PB. This was Devil Tifa's first and only time having the true ending record, as they never did another attempt after this one. Mossy believed in their new route, and decided to continue doing attempts with it. They knew that if nothing else, they could save 8 minutes against their PB by not dying on the final fight. On April 10th, Mossy Rain achieved a time of 2.13.39 using their new and improved route from their last run. I am shaking so much. After stumbling and losing time to Markoth, they would go on to Gold, Failed Champion, White Palace, and Voidheart, which put them ahead of their PB by 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Add in their 8 minute time save from the Radiance fight, and Mossy Rain was able to improve their time by 19 minutes and 5 seconds. 
The early days of any speedrun are the Wild West. Which strategies save time? Which route is the most optimized? What upgrades are more useful? These sorts of questions are best solved by groups of people, but when left to individuals, it feels like people riding west to stake their claim in varying sized plots of land. Throw a bunch of ideas at the wall until something sticks. This is where Monstalur comes in. Monstalur had been running Hollow Knight since March, and started running and optimizing 100%, even before doing any percent runs. Monsta had a solid grasp on game knowledge, as he had to route collecting all upgrades, all charms, and all boss fights. This experience gave him a unique advantage in these early days, as he had intimate knowledge of the sections that most runners had only played through casually. Monsta had a very different route from Mossy Rain. The biggest change was that Monsta went right from Mantis Claw, the game's wall jump, to get Howling Wraiths. He then went and fought Soul Master, collected the Dream Nail, and went directly to fight Broken Vessel and Lost Kin. The issue was, his only upgraded spell by this point was Descending Dark, the upgraded Ground Slam. After beating those two bosses, he immediately went to get Abyss Streak, the upgraded up spell. On only his fifth run, Monsta completed the first sub-two-hour run with a time of 1.54.55 on April 12th, 2017. This route saved nearly 19 minutes compared to the previous record set just two days prior. After this foray into a new category, the community moved back to any percent as new runners joined the community and made progress there. A new runner, Trinomi, joined the community in June, not too much later, and went straight for the true ending category. By following a route very similar to the one used by Monsta a few months prior, Trinomi caught up to Monsta in just a week. Trinomi would emerge to claim the world record with a 152.31 on June 10th. After dying to failed champ and a rough no ice fight, things were not looking great for Trinomi. However, by clutching out the late game, he's able to claim world record gold for himself. Monsta would fire back four days later, on June 14th, with a new world record of his own. Playing better than he ever had before, Monsta entered the Hollow Knight fight way ahead of his PB. Unfortunately, a mediocre fight and a really bad radiance lost almost two minutes. Regardless, his new personal best time would be a 133.34, almost 19 minutes faster than Trinomi's PB. Twice now, Monsta had taken the best runs that the community had to offer and crushed them by a huge margin. Not to be deterred, Trinomi kept grinding away. He wasn't going to go out without a fight. On June 20th, Trinomi was doing attempts. It started off as a regular old run, nothing particularly special about it. It slowly got better and better after some big gold splits against failed champion in no eyes, and then nearly two minutes of time save on the Traitor Lord split. He closed out the run with a time of 133.32, just two seconds ahead of Monsta. Monsta wouldn't respond immediately, as he was busy improving his 100% record. After about a month, Monsta came back and lowered the record again to a 127 even on July 31st, 2017. By rerouting the Soul Tyrant fight to be directly after defeating the Soul Master, he no longer had to travel to the Soul Sanctum a second time. However, Monster uses a glitch where, during certain cutscenes, it's possible to move while he's invisible. As the glitch was later ruled to be not allowed, a penalty of 30 seconds was tacked onto the end of this time, making the official time a 127.30. As a side note, we haven't mentioned it yet, but we're covering the no major glitches side of True Ending. There are some pretty crazy glitches in Hollow Knight, like out of bound stuff and map storage, which lets players warp to places they normally can't access. The vast majority of speedruns done for Hollow Knight are done with no major glitches because of just how broken some of these glitches can be. So there were some big glitches that were found early on that we didn't continue using, and there were some that uh, we did continue using. Uh, so there was Thorn Warping, which is um, you get knocked into a transition when you have the Thorns Charm equipped, and it stores your position when you get knocked into the transition and it warps you into a different spot in the next room, which was really weird. And we didn't end up using that because it was just on the wrong patch for the, uh, for the All Glitches run that we were doing. The main glitch that All Glitches used was uh, just called Storage Out of Bounds, which lets you, like, get out of bounds in a room as you're walking into it you like cancel the walk-in animation and you just are able to navigate outside the room those are like the 
big things that we found early on. Yeah, a lot of people uh, for no major glitches, like most people who play Hollow Knight don't seem to be too into glitches. Like that's true, especially of the casual player base, but it's kind of true of the speedrunners too. Like not many people are into big game breaking glitches like that. As more and more glitches were discovered in the early days, the exact definition for no major glitches changed a few times. Needless to say, for the most part, these NMG runs don't feature any tricks that are really game-breaking, preferring to show off pure skill instead of exploiting bugs. After a few months of relative peace, any percent world record holder Fireborn came to true ending to claim yet another category record. On just his ninth attempt, he would get a time of 122.21 on January 16th, 2018. I think that's Recky. How was he able to save five minutes against the previous world record? Fire is probably the closest thing I had to like an idol. Like he was the guy. He was like, I respect more than anything people that like strive for greatness and want to actually like grind it out and put in the effort to be the best. And Fire is that to a T. He's just unbelievable. Whenever I was coming into the game, everyone just knew he was the god gamer. For starters, Fireborn did a reroute of the run. After gathering the dash ability, Mothwing Cloak, Fire does a trick called Clawless Shade Skip, found by Magalore 9000. There is a ledge way up here that usually requires the player to have the Monarch Wings or the Crystal Heart to reach. However, it was discovered that it's possible to pogo off this shade to reach the area instead. This allows Fire to collect the Dream Nail very early without needing any extra abilities. And uh, one thing that Mag found was the Clawless Shade Skip. Yeah, so the Shade Skip, it's the same as the Shade Skip in any percent, but you just don't have Wall Jump for it. So you have to like parry the Shade a bunch and do some Fireball stalls in the air. It's like, it's really tricky and it looks really, really cool. It's not insanely hard once you practiced it a bit, but it, it, it was like a really cool uh, thing that was found at the time. <laughs> And it just lets you get to Dream Nail earlier on before you go to uh, Mantis Claw. Collecting the Dream Nail this early meant that Fire could kill Elder Who on the way to getting Mantis Claw. Fire makes a pretty significant detour to get Howling Wraiths, the upward attack spell, so he can get the upgraded version later in the run. The Dream Warriors and Dream Bosses that Fire fights in this run would become the standard for all future runs. Next, since Monsta's run in July, a new DLC was released named Hidden Dreams, which added a new ability called the Dream Gate. After getting 900 essence, players could drop a Dream Gate where they were standing, and later warp back to that point, which helped avoid backtracking. Another thing to note is that Fire was also running on the Chinese language. During this six month period of inactivity for True Ending, the runners over at any percent no major glitches were discovering a plethora of time saves. After some testing, they found that Chinese was the fastest language option, as it quickly condensed a lot of text, and Fireborn brought that optimization over to True Ending. All in all, this saved Fire about a minute. In the run, Fire falls behind just after Watcher Night, and things are not looking too good. However, by cutting Soul Sanctum out of the run entirely, Fire was able to save a little over six minutes. He rode that time save to the end of the run. On just his ninth attempt, Fireborn was the new, true-ending world record holder. Two days after this run, Fireborn would lower the record even further to a 120.58. Yeah. It's only like a... It's a pretty shitty run, but... Recky. Now Monsta has to watch this shitty run. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, Monsta. Despite dying to Lost Kin and having a really terrible white palace, he was able to clutch out the run. By saving small amounts of time on the last few splits, he was able to improve his time. But just as soon as Fireborn came, he left. Preferring to stick with any percent, this would be Fireborn's last run of true ending. After getting his 127.30 back in July, Monsta didn't take a break. Instead, he focused his efforts on grinding out more runs in other categories namely any percent no load dependent glitches, 100%, 106%, and all skills. When he was ready to return to true ending, he brought some new ideas with him. Monsta set out to change the route once again. 
First, he opted not to get any nail upgrades. Spells are way more effective than the nail is, and not getting those upgrades would help save time. Next, he replaced some of the warrior dreams by killing Soul Tyrant for the 300 essence instead. Third, he stopped going to get Howling Wraith so early in the run. He would still go get it, because he wanted the upgrade for later, but he waited until the end of the run. Monsta wanted to get the upgrade Abyss Streak because of its particular effectiveness against the Radiance. Due to his experience in the 106% category, and because he abandoned the nail upgrades, he knew that Abyss Streak would make the final fight much easier. Yeah, her, her especially because, uh, like, especially at the start, before the category really kind of developed, most people were only really used to that fight from the perspective of 100%. So the idea of even rooting a category that didn't fight her with that kind of tool set was just kind of like, you know, nobody really wanted to do that, or, or very few people wanted to do that. Last and certainly not least, Monster implements Lever Skip into the run. A glitch that exists only in version 1221, Lever Skip gave runners access to the Shade Soul power up very early into the run. Essentially, in the Spire near Watcher Knight, runners can hit a lever to open a door from underneath, gaining access to the tower from the other side of the door, essentially letting themselves in the back door. Paired with the Dash Slash ability learned at Kingdom's Edge, it's possible to hit another lever through a door in this tower to enter the room with a Shade Soul upgrade. This upgraded fireball spell is pivotal in true ending speedruns. So much so that every single true ending run beyond this point is on version 1221 specifically because of lever skip and early shade soul. The reason shade soul is so useful is, with precise positioning, it's possible to hit enemies and bosses two times with each fireball, essentially dealing double damage. Enemies hit with a fireball are pushed backwards by the blast, but at specific distances, enemies will be pushed back into the fireball for a second hit. A double hit with Shade Soul deals 80 damage, the equivalent of 16 basic nail attacks. With Lever Skip, early Shade Soul gives runners quick and easy access to one of the best damage outputs in the entire game. With all of these changes, Monsta would take the world record with a 118.10 on March 18th, 2018. And, and the other thing about Shade Soul specifically is that uh, when you have it and that's your main damage output, optimizing fights becomes about very much about precise positioning and timing in order to get those double hits with the spell. Because, you know, that, that bumps you from 80 per cast, oh, sorry, from 40 per cast to 80. So that becomes really, really important to optimizing the category is getting those double hits consistently. That makes a lot of the fights in True Ending very impressive, especially the Radiance fight. Because some of the some of the precise positioning that you have to do to get optimal damage out while dodging all of her attacks and you know and you only have five health and all this stuff. After once again taking his record back, Monster would take a well-deserved break. In his absence, a power vacuum formed. Who would ascend to the throne? Fireborn, probably the only person at the time capable of taking the record back, would rather stick with any percent. Who dared to challenge Monsterler? the man who eats other people's records for breakfast. Enter Scurry. Any percent no major glitches was far and away the most popular and accessible speedrun category, with over 80 different runners by the end of 2017. Most Hollow Knight speedrunners start their career here, before branching out to other categories. Like many others, Scurry got into the speedrunning scene here. By running any percent, Scurry joined the community of runners and made friends, and rivals, as he began his climb up the leaderboard. Seven months later, halfway through 2018, Scurry was sitting in the top five of any percent and was ready to branch out to true ending to test his mettle. Scurry wasn't one to shy away from a challenge. While a lot of runners would say they were going to run true ending, most of them chickened out. Scurry was ready to try something new and wasn't afraid to take on the infamous category. With a level head and a cool attitude, Scurry dove in. Scurry is somebody who... I used to look at it as like the beacon of consistency. Like whenever he would do runs, it just, I don't know, man, like if I had a record or if, if he was above me at, like early in any percent and I saw him like deep into a run, I'm like, that's, that's going to beat me. Like hundred percent. I already know. Like he just, it was so good at like the epitome of cool, common collected. And so whenever he ran, he just, yeah, just, I, I used to think back in the early days, I definitely felt like his, his consistency, consistency was unmatched. Scurry picked up Monsta's route,
getting Essence from Soul Tyrant, but skipped getting Howling Wraiths and Abyss Shriek entirely. Confident in his skill, Scurry fought the Radiance with just Shade Soul, a riskier but faster strategy. These changes paid off as Scurry got his first true ending world record with a 117.36 on June 19, 2018. Let's go. Let's go, dude. That was so good. That was so good. A few weeks later, he'd lower it down to a 116.51. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I don't know what to say this time, dude. That's a lot better. I like matched my PB time on that fight too. Good luck beating that monster. Even though he wasn't running True Ending anymore, Fireborn had a new route idea that he thought would save time. Essentially, at the time, runners had to go to Soul Sanctum to fight Soul Master and get the Desolate Dive ability to enter Crystal Peak. However, there is another way to get there without the Ground Slam ability. With enough Geo, the game's cash, you can buy a Lumafly Lantern and Dirtmouth to get into Crystal Peak. While untested, it was theorized to be faster, and it skipped an annoying boss fight. After this route was posted, runner Dark Demon asked, If we're going to Crystal Peak that way, why don't we grab the shopkeeper's key while we're there? We could buy the Elegant key from the shop and skip having to get Dash Slash. The idea seemed a bit out there, but another runner, Murray, sat down with the idea and made it work. Somehow, this little detour was actually faster than traveling way out to the far edges to collect Dash Slash. Instead, the Elegant Key opens up the door immediately below the door to Shade Soul, and is the intended way to get into the room. Using this new route, Scurry would get a 116.05 on July 25th. That was a good fight. That felt like a bad fight. That's gonna be sub 3. What the heck? That felt so slow. Okay, it was slightly over three, but whatever. Okay, there's the new route, everyone. This route would become the standard for true ending, so since there aren't any more crazy route changes, let's go over the route to make sure everyone is up to speed. Starting off, we fight False Knight before grabbing Vengeful Soul. From here, we fight Hornet and unlock the Mothwing Cloak before grabbing the Dream Nail. We kill Elder Who on the way to the Mantis Claw, and then kill Zero. After collecting and selling relics for Geo, we buy the Lumafly Lantern, and head over to grab the Shopkeeper's Key and Crystal Heart. After that, we buy the Elegant Key to get Shade Soul, followed by fighting Watcher Knights, Lurian, Broken Vessel, and Lost Kin before unlocking Monarch Wings. Next, it's Failed Champion and the Dream Gate, before fighting Hornet 2 for the King's Brand. Off to the Abyss, we grab Shade Cloak, and then it's a boss rush. Markoth, Gorb, Umu, Monomon, No Eyes, Marmu, and Traitor Lord. After that, a quick break to grab the first half of the King Soul Charm, then back to bosses with Galleon and Hera. Now with enough essence, we unlock the Awoken Dream Nail and head to White Palace for the last half of the King Soul Charm. Turn that into the Void Heart, and then we're ready to finish it out with the Hollow Knight and the Radiance. Got all that? Alright, back to the show. Back over on the any percent leaderboard, runner Hamothity tied Scurry's 3459, securing himself a spot on the top 5 over there. After matching Scurry's performance, he followed him over to True Ending as well, to flex on him here. On his first attempt at True Ending, Hamothity is keeping pace with Scurry's run up to Shade Cloak, falling only 3 seconds behind. Playing out of his mind, he manages to save time on every split compared to Scurry in the back half of the run. Hamothity closed out his first ever run of True Ending with a 1.15.18, 47 seconds faster than the previous world record. Scurry didn't wait long before attempting to take the record back. Three days after Hamothity got his 1.15.18, Scurry would get a 1.14.43. All right, that can still be very improved on, definitely. Happy to get it back though. Compared to his PB, he saved time by not messing up the Clawless Shade skip, getting a gold split on failed champion, better Umu and Noah's fights, and a cleaner white palace. On August 6th, Scurry lowered the record again to a 113.02. 
<sighs> okay. <laughs> I can breathe again. Uh, thanks for the Scurry was ready to take a break from the category, but his record wasn't safe for long. Yet another any percent runner would make the jump to true ending. This time, it was the new any percent world record holder and Scurry's rival, Visuals. So Visuals is an extremely dedicated runner. He puts a ton of time into doing runs and he, he streams like almost every day doing runs. He's really dedicated to streaming. He's really dedicated to a lot of different categories. He's kind of like Monsta in that sense, like Monstler in that he'll do like he'll jump from category to category. But every time he starts running a category, he has a goal in mind, which is world record. <laughs> and he'll keep running that category until he eventually gets it. He's like really dedicated in that sense. Visuals is a passionate speedrunner who locks onto a target and never lets up. While a bit stubborn when it comes to learning new strats, Viz grinds harder than almost anyone. He's also one of Speed Doc's original patrons. Shout out to our patrons out there. Joining the Hollow Knight community and the speedrunning community around the same time as Scurry, Viz proved his worth by climbing to the top of the 80% ladder, the game's most popular and competitive category. And then once I got to around like the 40 minute mark, me and Scurry started noticing that me and him were both improving at a similar rate and like he would get above me and then I'd get above him. We just went back and forth over and over until we got like really close to the top. And we made a joke. We were both at like 40 minutes or something, maybe 37 minutes where we're like, man, what if we just like keep bopping each other back and forth till we're one and two on the leaderboard, that'd be sick. Like, and fast forward like a year and a half later and we both were number one and two on the leaderboard. We actually did it. Yeah. And then he doesn't like to run the same thing over and over. Um, he definitely likes to skip around more than I do. But so like, like he, he was just interested in getting a good time at any percent. And then he was like, oh, well, I'm going to take a break and go run all skills and true ending. Whereas I ran literally nothing but any percent submitting one second PBs um, <laughs> until I got record uh, and then decided to give true ending a try. After taking the any percent world record on his birthday near the end of July, Visual started learning true ending to continue his scuffle with Scurry. After a month of running, Visuals was almost tied up with Scurry's time. Finally, on September 5th, 2018, Visuals would take the world record with a time of 1.12.07. Thank God. I just want to thank Mio for being there with me. you thick and thin, you know. You really brought me up when I was feeling down. He was able to save 34 seconds from the Watcher Knight through the failed champion splits, and saved another 45 seconds between his White Palace and Radiant splits. Now that Viz and Scurry were out of the any percent world, they only had each other to challenge. Both runners got into speedrunning with Hollow Knight, and around the same time too. As they climbed the any percent ladder, they went back and forth, climbing over each other on the way to the top. Now, with no one else around, their friendly rivalry could take its true form. As iron sharpens iron, these two were ready to fight head-to-head -head in an arena all their own. But uh, definitely it was interesting seeing Scurry and Viz uh, battle a lot in True Ending because there wasn't like a ton else going on in the Hollow Knight scene at the time, so it was really cool to see Scurry and Viz like fighting over world record. <laughs> Especially because Scurry and Viz, like they're pretty similar skill level wise, and they're actually kind of similar in terms of like playstyle too, in that they're not like they're dedicated to doing runs and they, you know, they, they put a lot of, they do a lot of runs basically, <laughs> is what I'm saying. And uh, they, they get into the zone really well and they have good boss fights. Like they, they actually have really similar strengths as players. So it was really cool to see them. And True Ending's a perfect category for them too, because it's a category that has a ton of boss fights and the boss fights are also really difficult. So it's, it's like the perfect category for them and, you know, just to match their play styles. Scurry ended his sabbatical from true ending in short order and went back to doing attempts. Despite a slow early game, Scurry was able to get a few fortuitous gold splits scattered throughout the run. By the end of the Voidheart split, Scurry had a 47 second lead. On September 14th, Scurry took back the world record with a 111.14. Let's go, dude. Oh, okay. I just like threw my glasses. Visuals played strong during a run on September 19th. He found himself 53 seconds ahead of world record at the Gorb split, 
about 43 minutes into the run. Some bad Umu RNG and a Miss Dream Nail lost him some time, but it wasn't enough to stop the run. As his run was now hemorrhaging time, he had to play it risky. Ultimately, Viz came out on top with a new world record of 111.07. I don't know, I don't, I don't know, dude. Come on, timer stop. Come on, timer stop. Come on, timer stop. I got it. Let's fucking go, dude. Fuck yes. Yes. Fucking easy clap. I almost lost that. <laughs> As Awesome Games Done Quick 2019 submissions opened up, Visual submitted true ending to the marathon. In September, the games list announced that visuals had made the cut. True Ending was going to make its debut in January 2019. Visuals, wanting to avoid burnout from over-practicing the category, took a break from True Ending, leaving Scurry as the top runner. On September 30th, he got a 111.01. Come on, come on, come on. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. No. Why didn't you stop? Why didn't you stop? <laughs> no. Timer. Followed by a 110.45 on October 8th. Okay, I still got it. I still got it, guys. That's it. That's the 110. I was worried for a second. And later, a 110.24 on November 14th. <laughs> I'm not going to be happy till I get the 109. I can still do better. Scurry was determined to be the true ending world record holder when visuals took the stage at AGDQ 2019. So yeah, we were like trading it back and forth a bunch. Because I also wanted to have it during GDQ. Because, I don't know, it wasn't like... I guess it's less of a big deal because I wasn't actually going to be there. But just like, people would like look up the category and then see me at the top. <laughs> so maybe a little petty, but I don't know. I still wanted to have it. After taking his break, Visuals began practicing true ending again in November. Viz was able to start a few good runs, including one that got to Radiance, but they ultimately died. Finally, Viz got on a good run where he managed to save time, split after split after split. Leaving Trader Lord, Viz was 56 seconds ahead of the world record. After a few missteps on White Palace, Void Heart, and Radiance, Viz finished out the run at 109.45, the first sub-10. Three days after Viz reclaimed the record, Scurry was back at it again. A rough early and middle game stacked the odds against him, but he was able to come back in the final few splits of the run and edge out visuals with the 109.29 on November 22nd. Where are these lasers? That was amazing. That was actually the best fight. <coughs> oh my god, I'm choking. Two days after that, visuals was also back on the grind. Viz knew that Scurry was historically much more consistent when it came to Radiance, the final boss in the game. Scurry's Radiance fight was two seconds faster than his best fight, so Viz knew he had his work cut out for him. Viz was able to get the record back with a 109.12 on November 24th, this time golding Radiance by two seconds, tying Scurry. Give <sighs> <laughs> Oh. Fuck yes. Towards the end of December, Scurry found himself on a run that was plagued by bad luck, yet he still finished this run just one second behind the world record. Wait, what? No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay, you tricked me, timer. You made me think. You made me think. This proved that Scurry could take the record any day now. 
Visuals, scared that Scurry would take his record right before GDQ, was determined to start trying to improve his time. On December 29th, he was able to do just that. After a solid start, Viz lost 17 and a half seconds from Elder Who RNG. He climbed his way back and was 23 seconds ahead after his Gorb split. After some more solid play, he entered Radiance ahead by 44 seconds. Viz pulled off a 108.22, the first sub 109, and Scurry said at the time that he didn't think he had ever been on a pace like that before. Probably like a 25 or something. Oh, 23? 22? 22. I like it here. I can't beat that. <laughs> you got too close, dude. You made me nervous. Defeated, Scurry would take an extended break from True Ending. Visuals could walk onto the stage at HGQ victorious as the world record holder for True Ending. From the shadows, a familiar face reappeared. With an experimental route idea theorized by Homothity, Monster would get a new PB with the so-called Shriek Route just before AGDQ 2019. While it wasn't the world record, Monster's 11038 put the fear of God back in the top two runners who had yet to face off against the Sleeping Giant. But we'll come back to this later. At Awesome Games Done Quick 2019, Hollow Knight was the opening run of the marathon. Visuals shined in the spotlight, playing well for most of the run, but he really showed off his skills at the end of the run. Entering the Radiance fight with full health, the situation soon turned sour. The Radiance deals 2 damage per hit, and since you only have 5 HP when you fight the Radiance in True Ending, the fight has little margin for error. After taking 2 hits, Viz decides not to heal, instead finishing the boss fight with only 1 health. Any hit would have killed him, and forced him to restart. When Viz hits the Radiance for the final time, the entire room cheers. Not dying Easy. Radiance. <laughs> we don't heal the bosses around here. When I was on the GDQ stage, I just wanted it to be entertaining. I wanted it to look cool. And so the most entertaining thing after I got hit twice, I was like, well, if I die, I guess that, that you know, that's how it's going to be. But I'm going to see what I can do with one health. And I think it'd be really interesting. But the GDQ run, like I'm like laughing as I'm like barely skimming by like orbs when I'm at one health. Like I didn't heal on the GDQ stage. I had the soul to do it. I could have healed, but I like wanted it to be more interesting. And, you know, it's a little bit easier if you have soul going into that next phase, you know, put it all on the line. If it happens, it happens. It was, a, it was kind of a mango-esque mentality of like, if I fail, I fail, but whatever, I'm just going to go for it. Viz not healing during GDQ was like, I was freaking out so much because I know that fight like very well. And that was like such a dumb thing to do. He should not have risked that. <laughs> I was like dying. Like I know there's kind of the thing where people always like comment or like the chat also during that run were like freaking out that they don't actually like understand the run really that much. They're just like, okay, he's at one health. I'm scared. But I, I understood the run. I knew like how much of a risk there was and I, I was freaking out too. So that's, I don't know, that was a really impressive moment, I would say. Viz closed out his GDQ run with the time of 127.57. Not only was it a great run to start the marathon, the rivalry leading up to the opening run helped push the run down over five minutes in a few short months. After the marathon was over, Monsta continued to grind out runs of the Shriek route. This Shriek route was a new idea put together by the community, namely Homothity, and was theorized to be faster. The new route was, instead of getting Shade Soul, the runner would instead go to Fog Canyon early to grab Howling Wraiths. Then, when you went to the Abyss to get Shade Cloak, you'd upgrade Howling Wraiths into Abyss Streak. This meant that you'd have to fight some bosses with just the unupgraded Fireball, such as Lost Kin and No Eyes, but you would have Shriek for bosses like Umu and the Radiance. The idea was essentially to lose time early to save time later. The chief point of contention was that it would be harder than the current route and make the game less fun to run. Besides a few brutal boss fights, Shriek Route also used a trick called Queen's Garden Acid Skip, which is the hardest trick in any percent NMG. With these stress points added into the run, Shriek Route was painful to grind out. Visuals and Scurry did not like the route, 
nor do they want to subject themselves to it. With the streak route at his disposal, Monsta's sum of best was two minutes faster than either Viz or Scurry. While he didn't have any runs completed that were faster, this helped solidify the idea that this route was faster than the existing route, whether anyone liked it or not. Shriek was thought to be optimal because there was a new route where you just got Shriek and you didn't get Shade Soul. And it was really annoying. <laughs> I actually ran it for a bit and I'm like, I hate this route. Uh, Viz didn't even try running it. But yeah, it was thought to maybe be faster, but it was like not as fun. There was like some really annoying spots. It's the route that someone would make if they would really hate themselves, I think. <laughs> no, but really, I mean, I've never even bothered trying to do it. And, um, but I remember trying to, um, to do one of the fights in this route, which, are, which is the, the infamous um, No Eyes uh, sh with a Shriek. And really, I... I spend maybe half uh, half an hour on that and then i knew that i would never never run it it's the i think it's the only bad uh, bad place of the the whole route because radiance is actually way way nicer with a shriek but yeah it, this the fight with the noise is just so rng that uh it's too i think monster said it's too nerve-wracking to to run like you, you just I mean, you when you have a good pace and it just you just get uh, uh, get a bad energy. It's, uh, it's so hard. So I think yeah, that's what he said. Determined to put this route to the test, Monster spent the next month doing runs of Streak Route. By the end of January, he had a 109 flat, only 40 seconds behind Visual's time. On February 1st, he gets a run that's off to a good start. Like a roller coaster of emotions, Monsta is gaining huge chunks of time in some splits, but losing big chunks elsewhere. The final nail in the coffin was missing a simple wall jump section to get to Hera, losing a few seconds. Monsta needed to PB by 39 seconds to take the world record, and he was 30 seconds ahead just before Hera. Every second was crucial, and this little misstep just cost him the record. Monsta decided to continue the run anyways. 55 minutes in, this last 15 minute stretch contained some of the hardest splits in the entire run. There's no way he could save another 9 seconds here, right? No, no, this is Monsta we're talking about. 9 measly seconds mean nothing to this man. Monsta goes on to save 6 seconds in a stunning white palace, followed by a gold on Voidheart, saving another 5 seconds. Monsta is back in the game. After a rough Hollow Knight fight, he's only 37 seconds ahead. Can he clutch it out here? Of course he can. With the two second gold on the Radiance, Monsta finishes this run 38.9 seconds ahead of his PB, beating the world record by 0.5 seconds. Monsta would settle for this run, but he hadn't given up on Shriek Route just yet. But while Monsta went back to the lab, Visuals made his way back to true ending runs. After his GDQ run, Visuals took a break from True Ending to work on his 106% time. Snagging a top 3 time there, Visuals allowed himself to dive back into True Ending to reclaim his honor. In March, Visuals gets on this run. Jumping out to an early lead, he comes out of the Elder Who fight 17.5 seconds ahead of his PB. After Viz took the lead, he never let go. He slowly gained time on nearly every split. He got gold splits on Shade Soul. Failed Champion, Shade Cloak, Gorb, Hera, and Voidheart. He did have a rough White Palace, but he was heading into Radiance 44 seconds ahead. Viz would end this run with a 107.28 on March 4th, 2019, the first 107. Oh, yes. <sighs> <laughs> Oh my fucking god, thank you guys so much. It's the run. <laughs> oh. After staying on the shelf for a few months, Scurry decided to jump back into the fray. By May of 2019, he gets a 107.58 as his new PB, 30 seconds behind the world record. After missing the Clawless Shade skip in the Mantis Pogo, Scurry found himself 11 seconds behind. 
Hovering between 0 and 10 seconds behind world record for most of his run, Scurry entered White Palace 11 seconds behind. Scurry got the first sub 5 minute White Palace split between him and Visuals. As if that wasn't good enough, he then beat the community's best split on the Radiance fight. The best Radiance split within the community was 229 by Visuals. Scurry did it in 224. Finishing his run with a time of 107.09, Scurry was once again the world record holder. <laughs> so, that was like sub 5 and a gold radiance and record. This category is freaking destroyed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess Viz will go for 106. I'm not freaking going for 106. Fuck that, dude. Last time, Visuals had beaten Scurry and was able to head into AGDQ 2019 as the world record holder. But now, the roles were reversed. Visuals was heading off to Summer Games Done Quick 2019 the next day, and that meant that Scurry would have the world record for at least the next 9 days. The shoe was on the other foot, and it was Scurry who got the last laugh this time. When Viz came back from SGDQ, he began grinding more than he ever had before. Viz is the kind of player to defend his title whenever it's challenged. Scurry may have been on true ending hiatus, but he was still Visual's sworn rival. It was time to take his record back. On July 8th, Viz starts a solid run, finding himself 12 and a half seconds ahead of the world record very early on. Unfortunately, a shoddy Shade Soul and Watcher Knight segment lost most of his time save. After solid fights on Gorb, Traitor Lord, and Galleon, he was back out in front. 25 seconds ahead of the record. Scurry's world record had an insane Radiance fight, but Visuals had a big enough lead. As long as he had a decent Radiance split, he would be able to take back the record. Viz then proceeded to have the worst Radiance fight of his Hollow Knight career, losing almost all of his time save. It was still a world record by less than a second. Viz was once again the world record holder with a 107.08. <laughs> Viz had been the runner who broke through many of the time barriers in True Ending. He was the first person to get a sub 110, sub 109, and sub 108. The night that Viz got his record back, Scurry messaged Viz saying that he would have stopped running True Ending if Viz had gotten the sub 107. But since he didn't, Scurry suggested the two race to see who can break through the barrier first. The next day, Viz went to work, worried that Scurry would get the 106 before he had a chance to do it himself. Scurry was a few weeks out of practice and wasn't able to get a run going. While he couldn't watch the whole time, Viz would sneak a look at Scurry's stream periodically through his shift, unable to fight back. Viz knew that all he had to do was have a good run, and that if he could just get to Radiance, he should have about 20 seconds of free time save. That night, after work, Visual set his sights on that 106. With a run that gained and lost time all over the place, he entered the Radiance fight one second behind his PB. This time, though, Viz went through the entire Radiance fight without getting hit once. He lowered the world record down to 106.51 on July 9th, less than 24 hours after he and Scurry agreed to race for it. Thank you, fire. Just had to delay it by a day, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Scurry. No, it's definitely, it's at least uh, like a 55 at most, but I'm pretty sure it's like uh, 52. 50? 51? Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Fuck yes. Wow, that was really close to my goal. Viz had now been the first one to break through four separate time barriers. Defeated, Scurry would retire from True Ending. Maybe not permanently, but as of now, Scurry has no plans to return. Viz, too, would move on to other categories, mainly to improve his 106% time. True Ending would go quiet for quite some time. Towards the end of 2019, a major discovery was found from an unlikely source. 
Newcomer Conra77 had labbed out a strat to kill Umu in one cycle. People had theorized it for a while, but it never seemed viable or consistent. Depending on the pattern, it's possible to save 15 to 25 seconds with a one cycle Umu. As visuals arrived at the airport to go to HDQ 2020, he checked the Hollow Knight Discord. Not only did Monsta get one cycle Umu in his run, but he also beat Viz's time by 45 seconds. This time save would be the final nail in the coffin for the Shriek route, as it no longer saved enough time to be worth it. Along with the community best White Palace, Monsta also got three golds in a row between King Station and Crystal Heart. For good measure, he also got a gold on the Watcher Knight split. Monsta finished his run with a time of 106.06 on January 5th, 2020. That was very, very slow. I'm probably losing time here, but at least I got the world record right. I've played it super safe. Like, super safe. <laughs> Once again, Viz would not be the world record holder going into GDQ, and he would have to wait another week before he could try to take the record back. Monsta has since said that if he had played a little riskier, he likely would have gotten the first sub-106. Visuals had unfinished business in 106%, which Monsta had also taken in January, so he went about grinding that category first. Once he reclaimed that record, he started up the true ending grind again. February was riddled with pitfalls and near misses. So many runs were making it to the final few splits, but visuals was coming up short. This wasn't just for world record. Viz had a chance to break yet another time barrier. On February 24th, Visuals is ready to break through the wall. After getting a gold on his Mothwing Cloak split, Viz jumped out to an 11 second lead by Dreamnail. He slowly started to bleed time, losing a few seconds on Mantis Claw, Zero, Gorgeous Husk, and Lumafly Lantern. He fell behind briefly on Crystal Heart, but rebounded on Shade Soul. By the time he got to King's Brand, he was able to hold on to a 6 second lead that he would carry with him through to Umu. Everything will be okay if he can just get to White Palace. In his personal best, 106.21, he had a really bad White Palace. He knew he had 20 seconds of time save if he could just play as well as he knew he was capable of. Success. He clutches out White Palace and finds himself 20 seconds ahead of his PB, which he holds on to through Voidheart. This is the run. The chat is going bananas, and Viz can feel the pressure. There are just two splits left. The only thing that could possibly kill his run just happened. You're actually joking, dude. You're actually... Unfortunately, there is a glitch in Hollow Knight called the Infinite Load. Hollow Knight is timed without loads, so it doesn't matter how long it takes to load the next area. However, an Infinite Load is a run killer. There is no place to reset, there is nothing he can do. His timer is frozen at 102.19, waiting for a level that wouldn't load, and a world record that would never come. Viz would do a few more attempts this day before ultimately killing the stream. Two days later, Viz is back on it. He's on a pretty decent run that made it all the way to Radiance. The sub 106 was off the table, but he could still get a personal best. Committed to finishing the run, he enters the Radiance with full health, but keeps getting hit. He only has one health left, as long as he can avoid getting hit. Viz looks on in disbelief. He choked it out. February 28th, another two days later, Visuals was back to doing attempts. It was a pretty good run that just got better and better with each passing split. He was ahead of the world record from Mothwing Cloak all the way to Hair of the Beast. That's over 40 minutes. Viz has a bunch of time save in White Palace. He gets back 18 seconds from that split alone. He's got a chance to get the world record and the sub 106 this run. Heading into the Hollow Knight fight 27.3 seconds ahead, it all came down to the Radiance. After a few missteps, he closes out the fight. Was it going to be the first 105? Unfortunately not. He closed out the run with a time of 106.04, world record. But Viz isn't satisfied. Speaking directly to us, Viz made a declaration. What's up, Speed Docs? 
Don't worry, this this won't be this won't be the last video uh, or the last run in the video. I promise. There'll be a 105 to end this video. The next day, February 29th, Visuals got back to work. He had the hot hand, and if anyone was going to claim the sub 106, it was going to be him. He started off strong, 12 seconds ahead thanks to some great Elder Who RNG. After a few costly mistakes, such as missing the explosion pogo, he finds himself behind. For nearly 30 minutes, he struggles to catch up. To get that sawn after 105, everything was going to have to go perfectly. Hollow Knight giveth and Hollow Knight taketh away. His perfect run found him needing a flawless Radiance fight. Finishing the split less than two seconds slower than his gold, he finishes the run with the 105.49, the first ever sub 106. First fucking 109, first 108, first 107, first 106, and now the first 105. What's fucking up? Um. Viz had achieved the first 109, 108, 107, 106, and now the crown jewel, the 105. This is where the record stands today. In order to push it any further, runners would need almost perfect luck to save time on some of the more random bosses. They would also need near-perfect gameplay, as Visual's run was barely two minutes off his best ever segments. While the game has seen an immense amount of time saved to this very day, the category for true ending feels stuck now. The category is no major glitches after all, so any glitch that is discovered is most likely not going to be allowed into the run. As with all Metroidvania style games, the game could technically be rerouted, but with true ending, the solution is not very clear. My mm, my prediction would be that not much will change from here on. You, you're right, there is a lot of moving parts to it, but I, I feel like this always comes up with speedrun routes where you know, everyone finds the current route to be so unsatisfying because it seems like there are all these small problems that could just be fixed, but, you know, it ends up being like the, the current route doesn't seem that fast, but then when you try any of these other things, you end up realizing that every other option is just really slow. So it, it's less, you know, that you, you're confident that this is the fastest route, but more that it's the least slow route that you have. So where do we go from here? The community sum of best, or best segment from every runner in the community, is 10340. The time can be improved upon, but long gone are the days of five to 10 minute time saves from route changes. Another minor glitch may become allowed, but since the game is played on a specific version of the game, this also seems unlikely. Uh, sadly, I don't think much is gonna really happen. Um, we're kind of restricted by the NMG rule set, where like, it's a lot less likely that stuff will be found because, you know, there's there's games where they find some crazy new glitch that saves like minutes, like years into its lifetime. But in this case, it would just like be banned. So I kind of have to rely on like small route changes, optimizations, like the newest two things that were discovered were like a five second time save to get to an item and like a 15 to 20 second time save from Umu, which that's like the biggest one for sure. Yeah, at most a couple small things. Um, it could probably get below 105, but I think sub hour is never going to happen. <laughs> True ending isn't Hollow Knight's most popular category. In fact, to date, less than 30 people have tried their hand at no major glitches. Truly, True Ending is not a run for the faint of heart. With its brutal boss fights, minimalistic upgrades, and precise platforming, True Ending is arguably the hardest category in the game. Only the community's best runners would even dare to take on the task, as evidenced by the list of previous world record holders. The list is dominated by names like Fireborn, Monstalur, Scurry, Homothity, and Visuals. The end result? True Ending is home to the most exciting runs that Hollow Knight has to offer, so keep an eye on it. You don't want to miss out on what's to come. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to join the community, check out our Discord.
Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. It really helps. Thanks.